Of course, we're going to leave all links below. This is education. But again, just like we're using the SEC's website and the SEC's definitions for digital assets under the Howey test, it's important to understand the law and understand common enterprise, understand the Howey test and its applications in the past throughout the capital market, throughout the markets before blockchain. And uh, we'll, we'll just, there's a few key points. We'll start here with the introduction, but um, the Howey test, as many people may have heard, is three part test to define an investment contract. An investment of money, which we just talked about, in a common enterprise with profits depending solely upon the efforts of a third party. And this is very important to understand profits dependent solely, solely upon the efforts of a third party and also what it means to be a common enterprise. Because you'll find that not only do digital assets, cryptocurrencies fail the, the money test, but they also fail the common enterprise and also uh, the profits dependent upon a third party test. So let's get into it exactly how, and these links will be below so you can read and share this as well as the video yourself. Um, th now this paper is specifically focusing on the, co the commonality, horizontal commonality, the common interest. Um, let's, let's and, break that up. Oh, the, well, the different, so there's, there's, two different kinds of commonality that you'll see the SEC talk about. Uh, there's vertical commonality and then there's horizontal commonality. And just to give you a quick definition, uh, horizontal commonality, that's the commonality between the investors and it requires them to pool assets and it also requires them to receive a profit distribution from, from the, the firm or the company. And the other kind of commonality, vertical commonality, this is a rela relationship between the promoter and the body of investors. So it's vertical. You've got the the organizational, you know, uh, promoter at okay. the top, and then below that you have the investors. And the relationship between the two is this vertical commonality. Okay, so moving on uh, to meet the countless and variable schemes devised by those who seek use of money of others on the promise of profits. So the idea is that- That's if a security. You're the, that's a security, correct. And, and of course, if digital assets fail the money test, then what we're really talking about is a new highly risky volatile arena where internally digital assets have been created to allow for the incentivization of, of development and growth, but the idea that uh, anyone seeking Algorand or Bitcoin or Ethereum is seeking money is not the same thing. So it's, it's very important to understand, again, the difference between digital assets and money. And, and we're going to get into the promise of profits. So well, let's do okay. the commonality first, because that's the uh, first standard. So we, we there was a case dealing with uh, some commodities, a commodity ac brokerage account, right? And the, the, uh, I can look it up right here. First paragraph, got, uh, go. you go what, ahead. You what, found it. Oh, oh yeah, that's notes? it right there. Yeah. I was looking uh, at the notes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've got my notes there that I don't have in front of me. Um, I know cool. that there's this one right here, the third paragraph. So here's another example. Okay. Um, uh, the Supreme court in Terrapin versus Knight recognized the common enterprise element of the Howey test. The plaintiffs were a number of individuals who held withdrawable shares in an Illinois corporation. The plaintiffs would only receive a return on their investments if the corporation made a profit. No interest rate was set on the investment and the return was based solely upon the success of the corporation. In Cherup in Cherupnin, the court held that the plaintiff's participation in a money lending operation satisfied the element of common enterprise because their profits were dependent upon the management of the money lending operation. So before we move forward, why is it important to understand the difference? Well, when someone buys Ethereum or, or buys uh, purchases on some, however way they do it, they're not actually giving money to Vitalik Buterin. They're not giving money 
to anyone at the Algorand Foundation. You're not buying shares. See, in this example, what they're specifically doing is they're buying shares of a corporation and that corporation is using that money in order to create profits. And virtually nowhere when it comes to at least layer one smart, you know, blockchain technology, do you have the natural supply and demand price effect uh, purchasing of a digital asset equate to sending money to the head of a foundation in order for them to create something of value to generate profits. Uh, so, and, and of course we know in reality, just to give an example, the economic reality of blockchain, which is the point of this, how does, how does it compare? Most of the value that's built on a public blockchain, whether it's Bitcoin or Ethereum, it's not from Vitalik or Satoshi Nakamoto. It's from other developers that have access to to build and create something of that other people value to use that network. So it's actually the public, the active participants, the investor class themselves are, are the exact same class responsible for adding value to their own investments. You're not actually giving up to a third party. So, so there's that aspect of it. But you know, when you go further, it gets even more detailed. The circuit courts disagree regarding the proper test for determining whether a common enterprise exists. This gets very interesting. And now this is where they get into how the circuits, uh, certain courts have adopted a very narrow horizontal commonality test. Under this narrow test, there must be multiple investors and pooling of funds. Now it gets very interesting when you look at the examples um, let me find vertical. Yeah, you're see. getting close to what we we're what I was bringing up. That Curran versus yeah, here it is, Merrill, Merrill Lynch, Lynch case. Merrill Lynch, yeah. Here we go. One. Here, this is the one. Okay, so in the horizontal commonality, there is a previous case. Um, let's go right to that one you were just talking about. The um, the common enterprise issue has surfaced in many cases involving commodity trading accounts. What's great about this commodity trading accounts is many people are calling digital assets a commodity of a sort, whatever. I'm not going to get into that, whether it fits this, this, or if we should create a new digital asset class that makes more sense. But these are people who had individual commodity accounts. Now, as you know, when it comes to public blockchains or blockchain technology, people who have a Web3 wallet or are staking are a lot more decentralized or a lot more separate than individuals with brokerages accounts at Merrill Lynch. But what was found, the court held that a commodity account did not meet the common enterprise element of the Howey test, did not. The court strictly construed the Howey definition and held that the investment was not part of a pooled group of funds and, the, and thus does not meet the second part of the Howey test. Well, there you go. I mean, at, at, when it comes to that definition, virtually all, well, all layer ones, virtually most digital asset, most projects out there you would find are not a pooled group of funds from investors and therefore would not meet the Howey test. Um, right. But yeah, I think and one more thing I would, uh, one thing I would add that kind of goes to support their, their reasoning is that those commodity accounts are they while they're while that asset might while those funds may be pooled in a in a, in a brokerage account somewhere they're always those accounts are still separate and each investor you know has has claim on that whatever that fund that sum is and those investors aren't pooling their assets to be used together they're actually often trading in a in a game theoretic you know way with each other trying to mm -hmm you know, trying to, uh, you know, buy a high, buy a low and sell high. And, and it's a zero sum thing, right? The, you know, right. if you make a profit on a trade, someone else had to lose. So right. th this, this, the commonality, it's actually an inverse commonality. There's a, it, I don't even know what word to use, but these, but, but these accounts are not, are very, if the account, if the commodity brokerage, like you said, was not enough to meet commonality, then certainly a, a, a self-hosted wallet that you, you know, your keys, your coins, you know, you're not giving up uh, custody of them. How does that, if that, if the other didn't meet it, then that is one step removed even from that, because you're never absolutely even pulling, you don't even have surface pooling going on. <laughs> you know what absolutely. I mean? Absolutely. 
Absolutely. I mean, blockchain technology is more decentralized than individuals having a brokerage account with the same company. And if individuals having a brokerage account with the same company don't pass muster, how would it pass muster individuals on a public blockchain that have different interests and who uh, aren't dependent upon the profits of a third party, which we'll get into on the the last tenet. That's, but we've obliterated- that's pretty much the first two. <laughs> <laughs> obliterate the first two now uh we like we said you know gary gensler has often come out and said that there's there he's there's a lot of clarity on the subject matter and people have charged him in the past with not being clear and uh to his credit when we look at the howie test and we'll go back to the security sec.gov website on their howie test applied to digital assets but you'll find that they are extremely clear on on the charges and because of this clarity it really does open the door for some positive growth in this new ecosystem while still giving them the opportunity to look into those projects that may be preying upon people with the promise of profits and pooling funds together right. which is the whole purpose of the sc which is which is, would be great to protect people from that um exactly Kern also involved in investment in a discretionary commodity trading account. The court acknowledged the debate between horizontal and vertical commonality. Not surprisingly, the plaintiffs asserted that the common enterprise element was met by a one-on-one -on -one vertical relationship between the promoter and the, vest and the investor. The court rejected this vertical approach adopted by the Fifth Circuit and instead adopted the more restrictive horizontal approach. The court held that the common enterprise element of Howey can only be met when there also exists between discretionary account customers themselves, some relationship which ties the fortunes of each investor to the success of the overall venture. And that's what you were just talking about. When you actually go into these ecosystems, all Ethereum holders aren't equal, whether you're staking it, whether you're holding it, whether you're using it to build or using it to sign contracts. Um, the idea that everyone is pooled together um, to, to the excess of the overall venture is no. not it's an a, accurate description. Yeah, even considering uh, to put a finer point on that, there's people holding inverse ETH that are, you know, literally bets that ETH will fall. So on the Ethereum clearly, blockchain, on, on the Ethereum <laughs> blockchain. Yeah. So, I mean, the idea that their fortunes are tied together, I mean, well, in a very loose sense, <laughs> but it's a positive I, sum or it's a zero sum kind of thing. I, I feel like there was, was there one more note page that I had? Let me see on that. Or is that pretty much it? Take, 127, take no, that was it. That was it. We, we pretty, pretty much, much covered. It, yeah. Um, commonality get, we got that covered we got that covered so we'll leave that and the idea is that of course if you're if you're a lawyer if you're working for a a blockchain project this is something hopefully that could be or uh, for lawmakers that are looking to help pass healthy regulation and promote uh technological process and and growth in the market this can be very helpful i i hope Hope you enjoyed that clip. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscription, notification bell if you want to get the latest drops. Of course, all of this is educational entertainment information to help you in your journey learning more about blockchain and how to participate. None of this is financial advice, investment advice. However, if you'd like to learn more about blockchain and crypto, we've got plenty of videos and playlists as well that walk you through DeFi tutorials, how to get involved. And if you'd like some more one-on-one -on -one help, Check out our website, wisebeyondbitcoin.com. We've got plenty of free sources, resources for you to scroll through and check out in your journey, your blockchain crypto journey. Of course, you can also drop us a line. Let us know what you'd like to learn about. Time is money. Knowledge is power. Benefit from our experience. Let us know what you'd like to learn more about. We'd be happy to help you. Until the next time, have a beautiful day. Namaste, y'all.